Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel, and I'm a board-certified double fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today, I wanted to do another video on Elacor. And after treating my very first patient and having some video footage of the procedure and her first before and afters, and kind of wanted to take you through the experience of treating my first patient and sharing this information with you, I thought that it would be a good sequel to the video that I did a couple months before when um, Elacor was kind of just launched and it was a newer device and I was super excited excited about it and I actually incorporated that device into my practice and wanted to hold off until I had my own before and afters and my own data to share with you and can kind of tell you a little bit more about the device and my impression of it. So before I move on, I ask that you like, subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who wants non-sponsored content from a board-certified dermatologist. And I feel that I'm a rarity on YouTube because most dermatologists and doctors these days, unfortunately, have paid partnerships or sponsorships, and you don't know what they're recommending if they're recommending what's truly what they believe and what they uh, feel passionate about, or what they feel is best for their patients, or because you know they're in contract with some company to promote their product. So even as a laser surgeon and a device specialist. As as a cosmetically trained cosmetic dermatologist, I never accept paid partnerships. I never have and I never will. Even my first day after you know, graduating from my residency and my fellowship, I never accepted paid partnerships because I wanted to be able to present true, honest, and authentic data that wasn't because you know I was getting paid by some company or in contract with a company to do so, including Elicor, which is what I'm doing this video on today. I participated in the clinical trials for Elicor, but I never accepted a paid sponsorship from them because I wanted the autonomy to say whatever I wanted about the device and if I didn't like it I wouldn't have it in my practice anymore and I wanted to you know be able to tell you guys why I do or do not like this procedure or why I do or do not feel that it's worth it and after treating my first patient in addition to the hundreds of patients that I treated back in 2017 and 18 in the clinical trials I'm a huge fan and I think it's a very safe and effective treatment for skin tightening so for those of you who don't know Elacor is microcoring microcoring is a revolutionary new technology that was engineered by one of the biggest brains in dermatology, Dr. Rox Anderson, as well as another plastic surgeon who came up with the engineering for this device. Rox Anderson is the creator and uh, the engineer behind Fraxel, Pulse Dye Laser or V-Beam, was the first to publish literature on the tattoo removal with a laser, hair removal with a laser, so a god in dermatology and a huge contributor to our field. As a matter of fact, when I interviewed at Harvard for my derm residency, I got completely starstruck when I met him because he has a beautiful beautiful mind and is the creator and engineer for many of the devices that we use in aesthetics today. So the way Elacor works is it uses micro cores of skin excisions for like a scarless facelift effect. Now we use the term scarless facelift and some plastic surgeons may get upset about that because in by definition a facelift is usually not just the excision of skin but also moving around muscle and fat and smaz and other subcutaneous tissues. But the reason why Elacor is referred to as a scarless facelift is because usually you're tightening the skin and you're removing the same amount of skin that would be removed in a facelift minus that horrific scar that goes by the ear, in front of the ear. And you're doing it by micro cores of skin excision in a scarless fashion. So once the micro cores are removed, it's attached to a vacuum on the platform that sucks up the little skin excisions, almost like thousands of little punch biopsies, and you're essentially shrink wrapping the skin. So you're removing anywhere from five to 10% of the skin per treatment. So if you have one treatment, you're removing about 10% of the skin. If you have two treatments, you're removing about 20% of the skin. So when you're removing skin when people do this kind of thing like doctor I want this effect that's what Elacor does in a scarless fashion which is really amazing and a great tool to have in our toolbox for skin tightening especially with lower face rejuvenation so the FDA indication for microcoring and Elacor is for the treatment of moderate to severe lines laxity and rytids or wrinkles of the lower face so many people ask how long do the results from Elacor last and that can just vary depending on the patient's age and their acceleration of the aging process, whether their skin, you know, is photoprotected and, and conditioned by using, you know, medical grade skincare products. Every individual patient is different depending on what decade of life they're in and how well they've been taking care of their skin. So somebody who's been taking care of their skin and um, has a lot of, you know, collagen and using medical grade skincare products may have slowed down the aging process as compared to someone who's never had any, you know, rejuvenation treatments or, you know, photo protects with sunscreen or depending also on your age, if you're 20 and you're having Elacor for 
uh, improving texture and acne scars, you may have a longer lasting result than someone who is you know, 65 and doing it for photo rejuvenation and um, for skin tightening to diminish the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and jowling and facial laxity. So it all just depends. But the number that's given out by the company and that I've heard from my colleagues is results can last about five to seven years. Now using this treatment um, in patients back in 2016 and 17 when I did the clinical trials, the results of the patients who I treated still maintained their results. Now we always say in aesthetics that the treatments that we perform have long lasting effects but they don't stop the aging process. So five to seven years later, you're five to seven years older and you know we lose about 10% of our collagen each decade. So even though the results of the treatment may have sustained for five to seven years, you may have had aging that has taken place and you know during that interim so it makes it hard to say but on average about five to seven years is the board review question or a board review answer for um, the duration of uh, the treatment um, efficacy so another question that comes up is can you change the settings and the answer is yes the Elicor platform allows you to change the depth and the percent surface area treated which means like the density so how many micro needles or how many um, hollow needles how many skin excisions are going to happen within a square inch area of the skin so you can alter that it could be less than five percent it could be eight percent it could be five percent and so you can almost adjust the treatment strength by increasing or decreasing the density and also you can change the depth so as you're going on you know thicker skin in the mid face that may be different if you're going on the submentum or on the neck as well which brings me to my next question a lot of people ask for off-label treatments of Eloquor um, on the neck the chest the decollete the abdomen the inner arms any area where you need that extra skin tightening now again as I said it's FDA approved Eloquor is FDA approved for the treatment of moderate to severe wrinkles and laxity on the lower face a lot of people a lot of my colleagues, and I see it on social media and Instagram and TikTok all the time, they're using Elicor off-label on the neck and decollete. So I have not done that yet. I'm a rule follower. I'm by the book, and I want to play with the late with the um, Elicor device, and I want to play with it a little bit before I roll it out to um, actually do off-label treatments on patients. But just because you see a doctor performing Elicor on the neck and chest doesn't mean that it, it's actually working and giving results. And the reason why is because the neck and decollete skin is thinner than other areas of the the face, right? So in order to, there's a difference between micro coring and getting a good result. And the difference is, and I've just, I've just learned this by treating hundreds and hundreds of patients, when you microcore the skin and you're not excising that skin out, because like I said, the platform's attached to a vacuum. So you have these hollow needles that are punching out pieces of skin, almost like pores of skin. And if they just stay there and don't get sucked out, it's kind of like microneedling, which still may have an effect. I'm not a big microneedling fan. That's a whole different video. But um, you're having the same effect as like microneedling, but not microcoring. Microcoring is when those cores of skin get removed. And unless you have perfect placement of that platform, which I actually didn't gain that skill until treating like, you know, my 10th, 11th, 12th, 20th, 25th patient, you know, you have to get good at having the platform juxtaposed onto that skin in skin contact with an assistant. Stephanie, my nurse is amazing. She holds that skin taut for me. I'm able to get the platform and the suction in just a certain perfect way to suck out those little microcores. So I see, you know, sometimes people being pretty cavalier and just doing it on the neck and chest. And I'm like, are you even getting the microcores out? Because microcoring is one thing, but having the actual skin get removed in the vacuum and seeing it removed is quite another and I feel gives better results and that just comes with you know experience and that's why also with like cost of treatment may vary depending on the provider if somebody's new to this and just trying to get familiar with the device and trying to like it before and afters and see what you know, just become comfortable with the device to maximize results maximize the surface um, contact with the platform maximize the micro cores and getting familiar with what density is needed and the amount of cores that are sucked out versus just stay there sometimes they just stay there if they don't get sucked out again that's more like microneedling that can vary and so I have you know a few patients that I have lined up that I'm gonna treat the neck and decollete but just because you see people doing it, it's different than actually getting results from it. And I do believe that the Elicor, the company Citralis, is going to um, do FDA probably clinical trials to um, test it on the neck and decollete because that's a very you know coveted area to have um, skin tightening as well. But I'm not for or against it. I just don't have the the answer for you. But I'll do a subsequent video after I um, can perform this um, treatment safely and effectively in patients and really see the difference myself. As of when I just got the Elicor device, you know I was talking about the device. 
but I couldn't firsthand say, okay, I have the new device, I've treated a patient, here's the before and afters, this was the experience, this was my impression of it. I wanted to be able to wait to post this video that I'm posting today until I had my very first patient, the most longitudinal data that I have, I treated her seven weeks ago, and kind of will take you through the experience as well. Now I'm very familiar with the device and I could talk about patients that I treated back in 2016 and tell you that they did very well and tell you about the little, you know, bit of the side effects, the outcomes and whatnot, but I wanted to, um, in 2023, have this device since its launch because sometimes devices change between clinical trials and FDA approval. They'll make little tweaks to the system. Things may be better or worse. They may be different. So I wanted to be able to actually have the the um, Elcor device in my practice, treat my own patient, give you guys before and afters and the experience as a provider and, you know, kind of showing her clinical outcomes and even side effects that happen with the procedure and be honest and true and authentic. So um, getting back to the, the neck and decollete, I don't have that data for you, but as soon as I do, I'll do a video to post um, yay or nay. But I think it will be a really effective treatment for those areas if we're able to microcore and get those, the, the skin little excisions out because that skin is very delicate and thin and it's not as robust and those microcores don't get as easily excised on the neck and decollete as they do on the face. But don't hold me to that. I'll get back to you as soon as I have the information and my own clinical data. So a lot of patients will ask, what, are, what is the clinical indication in the FDA approval? What is the age range? So I believe the age range is like, I feel like it's 20 to 70. I think I saw that somewhere. But in all reality, you know, I have my 70 plus year old patients who are just rocking it and looking amazing and would be excellent candidates for Elicor and would improve and get dramatic results with Elicor. I also have patients that are maybe younger than 20 who are doing Elicor for skin texture or acne scars. Elicor is not just for treating treating the fine lines and wrinkles and jowls and snatching up the lower face, although that's what it's indicated for and it knocks it out of the park with that indication, but also smoothing acne scars, pitted acne scars, large pores. You're removing little punch biopsies of skin, which is gonna overall improve the texture. We have a patient who we treated um, you know, about seven weeks ago who had uh, acne scars. It was Dr. Kennedy, my colleague's patient, and she did really, really well with improvement in texture of her skin. Now this can be, you know, even in early ages when you have acne scar you know as early as your 20s or even before um, I probably wouldn't treat any patient younger than 20 um, but I feel that 20 and above just like we use laser resurfacing and um, co2 ablative and non-ablative lasers fraxel halo for um, improving the contour of the skin I feel that for acne scars Elicor is a really great treatment for that as well Okay, and what kind of results are we getting? Now, I'll stay tuned, and if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post um, my before and afters of all my patients um, that I've treated with Elcor, but I'm starting with my very first patient of one, my very first one, because she is seven weeks out now, and you can see the improvement of her lower face, her nasal labial folds, uh, the little, um, you know, skin laxity, which she had very little of, of the, the pre-gel sulcus and the lower face, as well as a little bit of lip aversion, almost like a lip lift um, result without lip lift surgery, because you're shrinking that skin. Remember, the distance between your nose and your upper lip elongates as you get older, which is a sad but true fact, and as it elongates, and that has to do with the skull underneath, the bone resorption, skin laxity, lots of other things, lots of different changes that happen as we age that we all have to look forward to, but that lengthened uh, area between the nose and the upper lip lengthens as we get older. So doing things that help kind of bring that upper lip up and shorten the distance between the nose and the upper lip can really rejuvenate us and make us look younger, healthier, and you know, more beautiful. So filler is not always the answer, and I always am very opposed to people who use a ton of filler to try to avert the lips because then you just start looking weird and goofy. If you can do a tightening device to shrink that area and naturally kind of make the lip avert out, that always gives more beautiful and longer lasting outcomes. Same thing with lower face rejuvenation. Elicor is a tightening device and any of the other tightening devices and lasers which improve the quality of the skin. That's more my vibe as a provider. Yes, I do fillers, but when people are using fillers for the purpose of what a skin tightening device would be, that's when people start to look overfilled, they look goofy, you see celebrities, it happens to them all the time. I remember people talking about Madonna at the Grammys, I think it was the Grammys, I don't remember what award show it was, but she just looked different, she looked altered, and that's because you're using filler to just, you know, stretch out the face 
instead of tightening the skin or improving the skin quality and texture. And that's what lasers and devices do. You're inherently, it's like working out and conditioning for the skin. You're stimulating your body's own regenerative processes to increase cellular turnover, to to even out hyperpigmentation, to increase collagen, to increase elastin, and that's what gives beautiful, healthy looking skin that doesn't make you look weird. And it doesn't have to be surgery. Surgery also can just give you that wind tunnel effect, gives you scars. So when you do things like Elacor tightening devices and lasers, you're inherently just making your skin healthier by stimulating it to do so, and nothing really looks better than that and more natural um, long term. So in my 20 years of practice, you know, I do use fillers, they have their role, but when you're talking about nasal labial folds or the marionette lines or like the pre-gel sulcus, you can use filler to improve those areas. But when you tighten the skin, when you lift the skin about a, a centimeter and you kind of like lift it, everything looks better. And Elicor will do that for you without having that overfilled, weird filler look. So the results we're seeing is improvement in the nasal labial folds, improvement in the lower face gels, snatching up of the jawline, and that's what you see from like the frontal view, and also aversion and kind of a more fullness of the upper lip with a very natural, beautiful contour. From the oblique and profile view, you'll see the tucking under of the submentum, almost like what you would use liposuction or Kybella for, but you're tightening the skin. Remember, one treatment can decrease, you know, to, can tighten the skin and remove 10% of the skin. So if you're removing 10% of the skin without surgery, you know, you're really kind of tightening that up and kind of can improve that AP projection and that little profile kind of like tucking up of the submentum of the under chin area. So you see that, you saw that in my patient as well. You see sharpening and definition of the jawline. Um, and you also from a side view can see like the improvement of the little pre-jaw sulcus, the early jaws and the nasolabial folds. And even for people who have more severe um, nasal labial folds, marionette lines, and laxity and jowling. People do really, really well with Elicor. Remember, it's, it's indicated for moderate to severe, and my patient didn't even have any severity at all, and she still looked, you know, had an improvement. So it's almost like, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. If people have a little bit of like pre gel sulcus or a little jowling here, you could be an Elicor candidate. If you have severe rytids and laxity, you'll have improvement. Now, it's not going to snatch it up and make it non existent, but it definitely will dramatically improve um, that contour and the, that tightening effect. So, I always tell patients if you're the patient that pulls the skin saying, Doc, I just want a little bit, Dr. Cavill, just pull this up just a little bit, that's Elicor, and that's what Elicor does without making you look weird like filler does. <laughs> So the other thing I wanted to talk about is what to expect afterwards. So post-treatment erythema. Most devices, including lasers, whether they're ablative or non-ablative, I actually just did a CO2, I was testing some settings on my hand. I don't know if you can see it in this in this camera, but it, it I have like a little red rectangle of where I do my CO2 laser. Sometimes post-treatment erythema, whether it's from a peel, a laser, or a tightening device, can is, is not necessarily a bad thing. That means the skin is viable, those cells are turning over, a single transduction cascades are getting kicked off to stimulate like collagen synthesis, elastin synthesis, new skin, and new skin. Even when you have a scab and you peel off the scab and it's like red pink skin underneath, that's that healing erythema and that's what happens when you're having rejuvenation of your skin. So with Elacor, sometimes you have these little red or pink squares that can last one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, even longer than a month sometimes. But we also have the tools to reverse it if it if it bothers you or if it happens for a prolonged period of time. There's two reasons why you get these little red squares. You get them because you're having new skin that's formed in that area. You're having healing, you're having cellular renewal, you're having collagen um, synthesis, elastin synthesis. And also there's a little vacuum that's sucking out the little micro excisions of the skin in the treatment area. So you almost have these little red hickeys on your skin, if you will, because there's suction that's attached to the device. Now, it's not the effect of suction where it's going to stretch out your skin. That's not happening at all. You're shrink wrapping the skin because you're removing skin, but those little squares from where the vacuum is can also stick around a little bit longer than the company usually says for. So I was told that the company was telling people that the red squares are post treatment erythema squares can last about one to two weeks where my colleagues and I have seen that it could be two to four weeks or even maybe longer. But the good news is, is that they're reversible. Using V-beam laser will help erase them and help diminish them to the, where they're almost not noticeable. And the erythema isn't any more or less than you would get with like a Fraxel or a resurfacing treatment. It's just demarcated in these little squares so they look a little bit more different or more obvious. But my patient who um, I treated actually had prolonged erythema of these squares more on her left side of the face than the right, but we did V-beam. I wanted to wait four weeks to see you know, the full effect of the Elicor before I V-beamed her, but after we did V-beam at four weeks when those erythematous squares were still present, 
um, she had dramatic improvement. They actually were completely gone on the right side of her face and on the left side of her face, they were still there. So we did a second V-beam treatment seven weeks later, which is where my photos were taking at four, I believe at four and seven weeks. But um, the seven week photo will show the red squares post V-beam treatment. So they can stick around for a longer period of time just to be full disclosure. And I'm seeing this with my colleagues too when we um, present our data and we compare notes and our before and afters. Some people don't get the red squares at all. Sometimes it lasts one week. Sometimes it lasts longer than a month. Sometimes it can be I guess in theory, I've never heard it being more than one to two months, but it can maybe even be longer than that. But again, we have the tools and the lasers to reverse it should that happen. Now that's different than post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. That's in darker skin tones, and that's why this device is only FDA approved in skin types one through, I think one through four. So skin types five and six, which are darker skin tones, I actually will probably treat some of my friends and, and family members who are darker skin tones and see how they do and would treat them just like I would with a fully ablative or a laser resurfacing by stabilizing their melanocytes with pre and post conditioning of the skin. I wouldn't expect a non-expert who's not very well versed and who's not done a fellowship in laser and device training um, to, to try this and I'm, I'm just being transparent with what I'm going to do because I know that darker skin tones are not um, candidates for Elicor but a lot of people say that they're not candidates for laser too and one of my areas of expertise is treating skin of color and darker skin tones safely with lasers. You just have to know what settings to use and how to pre and post condition the skin. So with Elicor, um, I think that that may be a rate limiting factor, the hyperpigmentation, because if you have squares that are in like a hyperpigmentation geometric pattern, that may be a lot more disfiguring than erythematous squares or red squares that go away with a V-beam, right? That's a much bigger problem. Or depigmentation. So we have to really take caution um, when talking about skin and color, and I probably would do a couple of test spots on family members and loved ones and pre and post condition their skin accordingly and just be very conservative if I ever you know, try to um, perform this procedure in darker skin tones. But I believe hyperpigmentation for squares would be a lot harder to reverse and I'm very risk averse so I wouldn't probably recommend it in darker skin tones at this time as the company or FDA indication does not either. So let's talk about the side effects of the laser. So after Elicor, you can have bruising, swelling, erythema, redness, and I believe I've heard that the risk of infection has been like not even documented from any of my colleagues who have used this procedure or in the clinical trials, I believe. So the infection rate's very low. Of course, we asked you to keep the area clean to avoid working out because gyms can be dirty and um, they can uh, be a nidus for infection. Um, and also post-operative bleeding has been negligible. So. Um, Usually after the procedure, you know, we'll have you go home and for the next week, avoid any of your skincare products, which is hard to do because many of us have our active ingredients and our medical grade skincare, but the best thing is to just use uh, plain Vaseline and, um, or Aquaphor, but I prefer Vaseline over Aquaphor because it doesn't have lanolin, which could be potentially irritating, and just a gentle cleanser. For one week after the procedure, you won't be in any pain. Um, it will be definitely, you know, hard to look in the mirror. You'll look like you'll be in pain, but you're not in any pain. Um, and there is um, bruising and some swelling and, um, and redness that will be uh, present for about a week. And as those little holes close, um, it's kind of like a microneedling downtime. And um, the, the downtime isn't, isn't bad at all. And um, it's just usually just one week hiding at home using your Vaseline and your gentle cleanser. So visible changes that I've seen in patients that I treat with Elicor are, are numerous, and I'll tell you the most substantial results that we see. Again, I always say this, if you're pulling your skin like this up about a centimeter, those are the results you're gonna see. You get improvement of the nasal labial folds. You get improvement of the jowl or the marionette lines here. You get a snatching up of the jaw line. If you have perioral lip lines, you get, it, it, I don't wanna use the word erase because that's a big word, but depending on their severity, you can dramatically improve the texture of perioral rites and even erase them in some cases. Acne scars, it helps smooth the contour of acne scars. Large pores, it helps shrink um, and replace those large pores by basically when you have like a large dilated pore and we do a little minimal punch excision to remove it, you're basically doing that all over your face. So of course it's gonna give beautiful um, contouring and smoothing effects to, to acne prone skin, to acne scarred skin, and to um, skin that's highly sebaceous and has um, larger pores. And the other two most underrated but very noticeable results that I've seen with Elicor is a lifting of the submentum. So this just 
you know, this kind of little laxity or extra fat pad. Usually we also use Kybella to kind of erase the fat in that area, but um, using Elicor to kind of shrink wrap that and tighten that skin. Remember each time you do a procedure with Elicor, you get like a 10% of a skin excision. So when you remove that extra skin there, it just really snatches that lower submentum under the chin area back, which gives a beautiful uh, profile um, contour as well, as well as definition of that jawline, which is really um, impressive from an oblique and profile view. So those are the results that, that we usually see. Perioral lines, acne scars, large pores, mainly the lower face jowling, the little laxity of skin here, snatching up the jawline, the submentum, all the those things and so you see them from the front on view oblique side angle I mean I've been very impressed I was back in 2016 17 18 I'm impressed now and um, those are results that are most noticeable and the best thing is is that you're getting these results without doing filler you know how many times do patients come in they have these nasal labial folds we put filler in there to help erase them but then you don't want to just keep doing that year upon year after year. You need to do something else to alleviate those 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 nasal labial folds. And I remember Dr. Uh, Omar Ibihimi, um, who also trained at Harvard and was a, a fellow who did um, his fellowship before me, one of my predecessors. I really respect him. He's a well-versed laser and Mohs micrographic surgeon and a device uh, surgeon as well. And um, his before and afters, they, the patients had their nasal labial folds and jowls or marionettes definitely erased and they look like they have full filler but they don't have filler i mean they look like they have filler because the nasal labial folds and the marionette lines were greatly um, reduced but they didn't have that like full look to them which is really really nice so that is my Elicor update video. It's only been seven weeks since I've treated my first patient, which I shared with you today. We have other patients um, up and coming and I'll post their before and afters. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me there because I always post um, my before and afters and my highlights and also treatment procedures that we do in the office. And we'll, we do, we'll be doing a lot more Elicor now that I've gotten the device, I've introduced it to my staff. We have a very uh, well-oiled machine for the, um, for the, the treatment um, protocol and um, we know what to expect we have before and afters that we have experience with and can share with you. And as they come in, I'll continue to post and I'll keep doing updates on Elicor because although the device isn't new to me, it's new to my practice and I just really wanted to test it on, you know, on you know, patients who I, I know and are close to me and who I trust and just really look at their experience and post the before and afters and I share that information with you. So as they keep coming in, we'll keep posting, uh, but just wanted to give you my first update on Elicor after inc incorporating it into my practice. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your support. And again, thank you for sharing my non-sponsored dermatologic content. And um, I love you guys so much. You inspire me every day. That's why I do what I do. Thank you.